1984, Morning in America. Ronald Reagan is on his way to a landslide victory over Walter Mondale in the fall. The Macintosh is poised to take the personal computing revolution to the next level. Molly Ringwald is having a rough sweet 16. This is the single worst day of my entire life. And Run DMC's self-titled debut is about to take New York hip hop nationwide. DMC and DJ Run! Jump, did it, jump, did it, did it, jump, jump. But there's a different beat in Chicago. The chopped up blend of funk, disco, and European synth that DJs like Frankie Knuckles and Ron Hardy had been spinning at the West Loop Club called The Warehouse has become the de facto sound of Chicago's nightlife. <laughs> Underage kids on the South Side are dancing to warehouse style mixes, to which DJs have started adding elements of new wave and synth pop that they've heard on DJ Herb, the cool gent Kent's late night show, Punk Out. One of the more successful promoters on the teen circuit is a high school kid named Vince Lawrence, who leads a new wave-inspired band called Z Factor. Lawrence throws Izod and Jeans-themed preppy parties at a club called Sours, or at least he did, until another promoter, Craig Thompson, swoops in and books a teen DJ named Jesse Saunders for six months straight. Rather than clashing, Saunders joins Z Factor in short order, and the crew gets to work on new material. One of the staples of Jesse's DJ sets was a white label single called On and On by a group called Mock. When Saunders' copy is stolen, rather than hunting down another one, he asked Lawrence to help him recreate it from scratch. Recording on a four track in Saunders' bedroom, they start out playing the On and On bass line, which is basically the first eight notes of Lips Inc.'s Funky Town on a Roland TB-303 bass synth. By the time they've filled the track out with an 808 beat and Jesse's vocals, they've created something entirely new and made history in the process. It is the first time someone has actually set out to make a house record from scratch and is considered by many to be the birth of modern house music. It's an instant hit in Chicago clubs. On the massively popular WBMX radio show spun by the Hot Mix 5, and in stores like Imports Etc., where DJs and punk out fans buy their records. Saunders' version of On and On immediately sells out of its first pressing and sets off a new wave of experimentation within the genre. These things inside my soul, they make me lose control. It goes on and on. At the same time, Frankie Knuckles' DJ sets are starting to feature a new single by a local singer-songwriter named Jamie Principal, whose obsession with British synth-pop and new romantics shines through in the track's sweeping vocal melodies and hypnotic keyboard riff. Although Your Love wouldn't come out on wax for another two years, it's an immediate smash in Chicago clubs. Your Love is not only the first vocal house track, but the first track to really show house's pop potential. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the north side, Chicago's punk scene has grown big enough to get noticed by the media, including local news, and the locally produced Phil Donahue show. Mrs. Morrissey, I don't have to tell you that most parents would be extremely depressed if their daughter came home looking like this. So I'd feel a lot sillier running around in the suit. The scene's starting to be invaded by a new generation of kids who are less into the first wave of Chicago punk's art damage aesthetic and more into the leaner, meaner, hardcore sounds coming out of the East Coast. They distinguish 
themselves as hardcore because of the fast, hard-driving political music and the rough way they dance to it. In April, the fanzine Last Rites releases a compilation tape called Code Blue that serves as a manifesto of the new Midwestern hardcore movement. Collecting Chicago bands like Naked Ray Gun, Articles of Faith, Rights of the Accused, and Big Black, alongside Minneapolis's Husker Du and Milwaukee's D. Kreutzer. Hardcore fundamentally transforms the character of Chicago punk, replacing experimental art rock inclinations with tightly focused bursts of aggression, and trading in elaborate fashion for a very Midwestern uniform of jeans, t-shirts, and flannel. Cut! As 1984 comes to a close, this no-frills sensibility of the hardcore movement will leave a permanent mark on Chicago for decades to come, influencing the future of both punk and the indie rock scene that grows out of it. But the influence of House will arguably have an even greater impact. It will eventually spread around the world. It will spawn hundreds of stylistic descendants, lead to the birth of rave culture, touch every genre of music on every continent, and eventually become one of the main foundations for the new millennium's global pop identity. How hot is house music now? On a scale of 110, it's 12. 